Hey, welcome to Made by Mitch. I'm Mitch and this is Arlo. And today we're gonna to be making this baby gate. So recently little man started crawling and he is everywhere. So we have an entryway that goes up to a stairway into our main uh, floor and so we wanted to put a gate up so that he didn't have an accident and fall down the steps. So we thought instead of buying a gate, we would just make one. So the first thing I needed to do was determine how big the gate needed to be. A couple things you need to consider is which way you want the gate to swing, how tall it needs to be, how wide, things like that. So once I nailed down my dimensions, it was time to start cutting. So the first thing I did was I cut the top and bottom portions of the gate. Then I started cutting the cross braces that would go vertically um, from the top to the bottom. And I just created eight of these and then made them all the same length. So after I made my first cut, I used it as a template for the rest of them. That way they were all the same length. Next I laid it all out and then I tried to figure how far apart they needed to be spaced. Uh, since this was kind of just as I was going, I didn't really have a, a plan or anything going into it. Um, I had to figure up where the center line was and then once I determined that, then I could space them all out equally. They all ended up being two and a half inches apart and that was perfect. The next thing was to pre-drill and screw all of the boards onto the top and bottom boards. And one thing you want to make sure here is you need to make sure that you keep everything square. Uh, it's really easy to, to go off track here. So what I did is I attached the first few boards on the bottom half of the gate and then I went ahead to the top of the gate and attached those few boards. The whole time I'm checking to make sure everything is straight and lined up the right way. Before I started adding finish to the gate, I wanted to take it up to the steps and make sure it was going to fit. I wanted to make sure it would open correctly, uh, there wasn't anything that I was missing, and it allowed me to come up with a game plan on hanging the gate. Also I had a visitor. Busted. Next it was time to sand. Not really much to say about sanding other than it's sanding. But what I will say is I chamfered the edges with the orbital sander, that way there were no sharp edges. Then it was time to apply some finish, and what I used was Minwax's Dark Walnut, and I just applied one coat all over the gate, and I just love this color. I, I typically use this color for everything that I've done. I think the finish turned out great. It also matched the stairs that are already in the house. Next I added two coats of spray shellac on the gate. I know there are lots of types of finishes out there, but the biggest reason I use shellac is because it's fast drying and it's pretty durable as well. Now, I did finish a couple extra boards to hang the gate with, so what I'm doing here is I'm marking one of those boards because there was an angle of trim that I had to kind of go around, so I marked where I needed to make a cut. Uh, and as you can see, it is not a 45 degree angle, and so I just made two marks and then I just got a straight edge and I drew a line from one mark to the other mark and then I cut it with the circular saw. Now this did take me two different tries. I had to go back off camera and uh, kind of fix my cut, but this right here is the second time and it fit perfect. So after I did this, um, I pre-drilled and then I added three inch screws to mount this board to the wall. So my original plan was to add another one by four on the opposite side of the gate and attach it to the stair rail to fix the hardware too as well, but it just didn't really work out. I couldn't find a good way to attach it, so I ended up putting this, this board on top of my first board, and then I attached it also with three inch screws into this board. Next, I added the hinges for the gate. What I did is I used a straight edge and a level to mark two points where the hinges would be. And once I made sure everything was level, I pre-drilled the holes and then I attached the hinges. To make sure the gate was the right height, I added a piece of three quarter inch plywood under the gate while I mounted the hinge to the gate. That way I knew I wouldn't have to drag on the floor or anything like that. It was gonna be at a good height. And this is something that I accounted for when I made the height of the gate originally. And I am pre-drilling all of these holes to make sure I don't split the wood here while I'm doing this. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky because I had to mount this to a round pole and the gate didn't quite reach the pole and so what I did was I got a scrap piece 
of this 1x4, I taped it on the door and then I pre-drilled and screwed this little piece of wood to the gate and it extended out the hook a little bit so that it would latch. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. And as you can see, I'm just using painter's tape to hold that piece of wood on there and it worked fine. So using this piece of wood really solved the problem I was having in attaching the hardware to this gate. I was kind of freaking out a little bit and it wasn't really in the plan, but it worked. So next it was time to mount the hardware for the gate. And I just got your, your standard um, outdoor gate latch. That's what I'm going to use. The reason I chose this is because it's self-closing. It's easy to open if I'm walking up the steps with a bag of groceries or something. Um, I can easily open the gate. So that's why I wanted to choose this gate. And I can always put a pin in it or something once my son figures out how to open it. Um, so next I just attached both pieces of the gate the straight bar to the gate side and then to the pole I just pre-drilled some holes and then I attached the latch part to the pole. This was a little bit awkward because it was a flat latch and the pole was round and so I had to just kind of work it until it, it fit and I had to use screws that didn't come with the kit because they were just too much. This is the finished gate and I am really happy with the way this turned out. I know it's a really simple build but it was totally worth it and it helped make uh, this part of our house look a lot better than it would have if we would have bought something. I think anybody could build this gate. If you can get just past the hanging part, you're good to go. And Arlo is a happy camper. Well, that's it for this build. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I had a lot of fun making it. So it would really help me out if you would subscribe to my channel or like this video. Also, you can follow me on Instagram or visit my website at mademitch.com. I'll have links to those in the description. If you have any questions on anything that I did or how I did something, feel free to leave me a comment or leave me some feedback about the video. But thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Well, hi, welcome to Made by Mitch. Yeah. Well, hi, welcome to Made by Mitch. I'm Mitch and this is Arlo. And today we're going to be making this baby gate behind me. Can I go one? Yeah. Mm -hmm.